Hey guys, it's Joelle here. Today I have a video on where to source online. If you are unable to go to the thrift stores in person or you just don't like going in general, then you have come to the right video. People source online rather than in person for multiple reasons. Um, it could be the pandemic, it could be lack of time, or maybe you just don't like going into thrift stores. I always enjoy my thrift store trips, but it can be exhausting. So I think that as a reseller, whether you're part-time or full-time, it's important to have options online and in person to get new inventory. I have three options for where to source online. One of them is a little more well known, but the other two that I'm gonna go over first are sourcing options that I don't see a lot of people talk about. So I'm just gonna get right to it. First up for sourcing online, we have Facebook groups. I am a part of a couple of Facebook groups and they are dedicated to people who are trying to sell inventory for $20 or less. So what people do is they will set up a time to basically have an auction with a bidding process in the comments and they will post bulk items. And according to group rules, the items have to be priced at $20 or less. While the maximum price is $20, I have noticed from a lot of people that their typical prices range between $1 and $7. Just like any online sourcing option, you do have to pay for shipping, so you should factor that into your cost of goods, but I have seen a lot of gems in these Facebook groups with extremely low cost of goods. I will post some screenshots of some items that have caught my eye in some pretty good Bolo brands. Um, I have personally never purchased from these groups and this is because you pay through PayPal and I do not have my bank account linked to my PayPal yet. So I have been unable to purchase. Honestly, I just need to get right on it. It'll take like five minutes. I just haven't gotten to it. But overall, these Facebook groups are very trusted. Um, if there are any scammers in the group, they definitely get exposed and they will be kicked out immediately. And paying through PayPal is a very safe method where you're less likely to get scammed. So overall, I would recommend these groups, especially if you are trying to buy bulk inventory because most of the sellers that have these auctions will be posting 20 plus items. Next up is another unique way to source online and that is through Instagram thrift pages. Now, I have to throw my shameless plug in. I have an Instagram thrift page. It is Closet by Joelle, just like my YouTube, and it's linked below in all of my videos. Starting bids and shipping costs for me usually start around five to seven dollars. Sometimes that bidding number can get high, but I think that if you can get to an item early enough, you might be able to get a gem for a really, really low cost. For example, I got this t-shirt, I cannot remember the brand, and this Madewell dress for $20 total, and that included shipping. I had my eyes on both of them and the bidding process for this specific closet lasted two days and I saw that there were no bids. The starting bids were at $5 for both of these items. So right before the bidding ended, I went ahead and put my $5 bids in and I won the bid. Now, when it comes to buying on Instagram, there is no protection whatsoever like there is on a platform like Poshmark. So I would 100% recommend buying from a trusted seller. Um, some ways to determine a trusted seller would be to look at their highlights. Most Instagram thrift pages will have a proof highlight. And in that highlight, they will show people receiving their packages. They might show messages between them and the buyer. Or if the buyer posts a picture in your item, then they will repost it and put it onto their story. Another thing is to make sure that they have a lot of posts. So when I started my thrift page, obviously I am a trusted seller, but people are less likely to buy from you when you have a smaller amount of posts. Now I am up to almost 100 posts and I have noticed that a lot more people are following me and trusting me with the shipping process. So overall, just make sure that you are buying from a trusted account that other people have purchased from. And if you wanna to go to my account, obviously I would love for you to look at my inventory, but you could also look at other people that I'm following. I follow a lot of other thrift pages and I have seen no problems with their accounts. I've seen a lot of proof of purchases and it's just a great way to get inventory at a very low price. And shopping on Instagram is something that I haven't seen a lot of resellers kind of advertise. So if you are looking for an online platform other than something like ThreadUp or anywhere that has mystery boxes like Joan our wholesale, I would definitely recommend looking at Instagram thrift pages. Now my third and final way to source online is through ThreadUp, which is one of the more popular online platforms that resellers source through. So there are two ways that you can source on ThreadUp. One is the rescue boxes and the other is simply browsing through their secondhand items. There is the occasional horror story about rescue boxes, but I have had no bad experiences. I typically do the shoe box. I believe I have ordered 
five shoe boxes in one DIY denim rescue box. And there's only been one box that has disappointed me. It was one of the shoe ones and my only higher end pair of shoes was a pair of Cole Haan boots. Now, once those sell, I will get my money back and a little bit of profit for the box. But overall, I've only sold two pairs of shoes and the others are just sitting in my Poshmark closet. Like I said, that is the only box that has disappointed me. And I still know that I will make my money back and a little bit of profit. I just got a bunch of shoes that I typically wouldn't pick up if I were sourcing for inventory at a thrift store. But these boxes are great. I've seen from a lot of other resellers that just the mixed clothing box is really good. I'm in the process right now of getting rid of my death pile and so I have not ordered one of those yet but once I get all of my stuff listed I think I'm going to get one of those mixed clothing boxes so that I can kind of amp up my inventory. The cost of goods for most of these boxes are very low. For the shoe rescue box it has been $5.34 per shoe for me and for the denim rescue box, it was 163 per item. So while it is a mystery and you do not know if you will be content or disappointed with the box, I think that doing the rescue boxes has a little bit of risk associated to it, but a great reward. Now, if you don't want to take the risk of getting a rescue box, you could also look through ThreadUp's a wide variety of items that they have on their website. These are all items that people have sent in to sell, and so they are at a discounted price. And ThreadUp also runs a lot of promotions where you could maybe get free shipping or up to 50% off on certain items. They also have a rewards program now, which I am not educated enough to talk about, but I do know there are a lot of other resellers out there who know a lot more about the rewards program if you want to learn more about it. I've been trying to get into retail arbitrage and that is when you go into stores that aren't thrift stores. So somewhere like Nordstrom Rack or TJ Maxx and you might spend a little more per item but you can find new with tags items and a lot of good high-end items. So I kind of look at ThreadUp as retail arbitrage because you do have to pay that shipping which adds on to your cost of goods and a lot of their higher end items are priced a little bit more than what the thrift stores would price them at. I have seen resellers like Mogi Beth who will go on there and they will buy maybe the girlfriend jeans or mother jeans. These sellers might pay up to like $25 or $30 for these jeans, but they're able to check comps and they can still make a really decent profit. So I have only bought rescue boxes from ThreadUp. Um, like I said, I'm trying to kind of get more acquainted with retail arbitrage, but the biggest piece of advice I could give you is to look up comps because if you're gonna spend more for an item, you have to make sure that you could get a good profit for it. Like I said, I have not sourced on ThreadUp yet. Sometimes paying up for items scares me, but some of the things that I do look for are girlfriend jeans and mother jeans, the Tory Burch shoe section, keywords like cashmere, silk, or wool, and I will also look for items that are new with tags. I know when you sign up for ThreadUp, you also can get up to 50% off your purchase, and I'm not sure if that code ever expires, so I would definitely recommend if you haven't signed up for ThreadUp, sign up for it now and at least get that 50% off because you could probably find some good items at a lower cost. All right, those are my three ways to source for inventory online. Just to recap, we have Facebook groups, which I will link the one that I am a part of below. We have Instagram thrift pages and ThreadUp. I appreciate you all watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you all for the next video.